Hello, we are live. Um, this is, I think, the what is this like the sixth session of the MIT IAP uh, Blockchain Prototype Jam. Um, so today we are going to be running through all of the projects and doing just trial run demos and pitches. All the projects are at different stages of um, readiness for the final pitch. Um, so what's going to happen is Daza behind me is setting up the queue of everybody. It's going to be up on the screen there and we're just going to be running through the projects starting with um, the LCS project, um, and Gabby's going to be presenting that. So we'll let her come up and get hooked up. We'll be starting momentarily. Yep. And we'll probably need a, a little bit more filler um, while we get ready. And one thing that might be helpful, um, I was thinking, Carolyn, if you were in um, as good a position as anybody on this planet to talk about, uh, is what people can expect one week from today um, at our Kind of turning into almost a gala kind of event. I don't want to overblow it, but it seems like you know, we got people coming up. You were just telling me from Brooklyn and consensus. Yep. And what's going to happen a week from today, Caroline? So a week from today at 5 p.m., right after the last session, um, we're going to be having a, a demo extravaganza. Um, and it's going to be up on one of the top floors of the Media Lab in a fancy little auditorium. Um, and so we're going to be having some folks from the Digital Currency Initiative come join us, and also some folks from, um, from Brooklyn, from Consensus. Um, we're going to have a keynote talk from Joe Lubin, who is a founder of Ethereum and the founder of Consensus. Um, and so thanks to him, really, is why we've been able to present all of these Ethereum tools, um, they were all developed under consensus. Um, so that's what that's going to look like. And basically what folks who have projects can expect um, is I think we've got uh, five to seven minutes strict, kind of that's all the time you have to pitch your project and give a demo, uh, which includes about a 90 second long video. Um, and. So that's what we're doing next week is just iterations, practicing over and over, um, making sure we're ready for the judging. And speaking of judging, we are going to have a panel of uh, distinguished experts. Um, I, I, I actually might rephrase it and say that this is going to be more of a, a feedback panel rather than a panel of judges. Um, so we have folks uh, from Consensus, like I mentioned, folks from Ubiquity.io, which is um, a, a really interesting startup that's doing some, some cool stuff in the real estate uh, space. Uh, we're going to have somebody from State Street on the panel and also um, folks from the Digital Currency Initiative, which is the kind of the big official blockchain um, organization institute within the Media Lab. It looks like Daz is getting some stuff. Yes, indeed, I am. Um, what else can you tell us? Are we going to be joined by people from meetups? And will we be doing community yes. building in the Bostonian area? Yeah, I think we have three meetups um, out there right now. So there's the Legal Hackers meetup, um, which is actually the, the meetup that we're asking people to RSVP on. It's kind of confusing having three meetups out there, but we're also reaching out to Boston Blockchain Meetup and the Boston Ethereum Enthusiasts Meetup. Uh, so we're going to be getting a lot of different folks from the community, which is exciting. Um, yeah, and it'll, the event will be after work, 5 to 6.30, hopefully. Um, and afterwards, the plan is to migrate uh, across the street to the Venture Cafe. They have a next networking weekly networking Thursday session that they've got over there and there's beer and um, networking and a lot of great community that would have a lot of kind of crossover with uh, what we're trying to do and I, people I think that would be interested in hearing about some interesting um, so I apologize I'm not sure what why I'm not able to start this thing out for our first um, class so I'm going to try to come at it a different way um, from manage the page, maybe. Uh, do you, 
Can we I, do just like a regular hangouts and not a hangout on air? I think we can. Not. And you know, maybe the way to do it just for this time is we'll just keep rocking on this one. So, um, what we're talking about now, just by the way, for those of you out there that may have ideas on business process and optimization scheduling, um, a new connection science uh, is we. What I'd like to do is uh, on next Thursday have a hangout that goes five minutes for each one and just have them lined up in advance, and there'll be like one five minute YouTube with production, and not like an, a two hour humongous video file that results from it. Um, and also a kind of somewhat a semi-enforced five minute, you know, well every, it's a segment, it's it's perfect. Um, and then probably another demo that's just going right through, uh, another hangout that's going right through the whole event, you know, so people can experience it live. So um, we're learning about how to do that as we go. So I think for today, we'll just we'll just maybe keep it on one, um, one hangout because I've already hit a brick wall while I'm trying to activate the others. I'm starting to think, Carolyn, maybe, Google knows stuff, and they're like, okay, this page can only have be broadcasting one at a time. Oh, okay. Perhaps we can troubleshoot it. Yeah. So, okay, um, I think we're ready for you, Kathy. Um, and are you going to be doing screen sharing? Um, do, do you, like I sent in Slack, do you want to open it there? I do, and I'm just thinking um, for, yes, um, I do want to open it there. Um, so, come on. Uh, here, oh, so this might be the way it ends up being is that we point the camera at the screen. Actually, could literally be what we end up doing. We'll, we'll find out. But ID broadcasting people's demos from the screen share. No, I sent it in the blockchain. Okay, I'm here. Um, um, yep. Um, um, you sent it at 250, and it, which of the two? The YouTube? Well, anyway, they're both right here. Okay, so and I'll. Um, I'll just put it on that screen to make it simpler. Okay. okay. Thank you, Gabby. So this is a project, by the way, that's been a stealth project that nobody knows about yet. It's been hacked solely at Code for America and only from like the good graces of people's hearts. Hi, I'm Claire. Oops, sorry. Uh, second name. Um, it is not a blockchain project yet. It's not like directly in our roadmap, but we would uh, welcome any feedback on how to do blockchain uh, afterwards in it. Um, and my teammates couldn't be here, so we um, did a demo video. And uh, this is my colleague Clarence, who idealized the project, uh, who's going to talk a little bit about it. And then afterwards, um, I, I will be here to collect some feedback. Steph Spielman. And I am here to present the Live Credit System app for LCS version 0.1 for the MIT Methods to Launch Rapid Prototyping course. I am the app's product owner, and along with my team, David Connick and Gabrielle Scardine, worked to design and deliver an app to deploy in the special education field. While I tell you a little bit more about the life credit system, here's a clip of LCS version 0.1 working on my iPhone 6. The LCS app applies my method of working to cultivate intrinsic motivation and self-determination of children, adolescents, and young adults on the autism spectrum. It also addresses institutional needs, data collection, storage, and analytics, and especially in the field on a smartphone or tablet platform that will interface seamless, seamlessly with desktop computers. At its core, the live credit system is a gamified reward system. While traditional reward systems aren't inherently bad, they also often cause anxiety, especially in higher functioning individuals, which decreases their executive functioning and drives maladaptive behavior. LCS awards life credit behaviors, which accumulate into levels gained by users. Bubbles are exchanged for real, real world items such as money or computer time. As we're about to see here, LCS delivers real time graphical representations of data. And this is the keystone habits of self reviewing that the LCF now facilitates by delivering real time data visualization in the hands of clients and therapists. Also known as self monitoring and self management. There's growing research on the value of self-awareness and self-determination through the process of self-reviewing. 
in my field, perhaps the most important thing for my self determination, which is to initiate incomplete tasks, to critically think, to live independently, and to navigate complex. So, and LCS enables all of our key roles client, therapist, parent, and agency to become reporters and reviewers of data. For me, therapist who works directly with my clients, LCS success will largely be defined by any reduction in the time it takes for me to collect my data, as well as successfully automating analysis and aggregation after messages are over. By having the data in a pre-written session, I am able to also be more present with my clients and use the data as a tool to facilitate engagement, self-determination, and awareness through self-review. Beyond data economization for specific agencies, which will also be a significant metric for success, is the coherency of the data stream as it flows to and from various stakeholders in the client arena. Legal compliance is certainly a primary concern. A vision at the heart of LCS is to create robust, secure, and up-to-date databases for medical records and of those with special needs. All too often, I have seen valuable insights fall through the cracks while the wheel continues to be reinvented and time and resources wasted. Preliminary findings from Autism Speaks from 2012 so that the national costs of autism are around $137 billion annually, averaging an extra $17,000 per child. Any tool that can help to improve quality of treatment systemically or personally is of great use, and LCS aims to do work on both these levels. My team and I were able to deliver a stable prototype using free Google products and services. While there's a small script that can be used to automate the population of new folders for new sessions, this is a simple and accessible app that operates on Google Drive. In future session uh, versions, we would hope to stream the data at larger time scales to improve visualizations and address any concerns that come up during beta testing. We have interest from two private organizations from several independent therapists and one public school district in our beta testing environment. So please visit our GitHub, which is hosted on our website, system.com. You can chat with our team on Slack. You can join our beta testing community at our Google group, Life Credit System. And check out our wiki for in-depth detail on the Life Credit System. Thank you so much. That's great. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, uh, as he said, um, we are very open to feedback and collaboration. Um, this first version, we tried to put as little code as possible so that it can be um, fully maintained by um, Clarence, who has no technical background. but. Um, this could not have happened without the mentorship of um, Daza and from um, Jonathan about like rapid prototyping and how to link um, uh, the legal and technical and business aspects <coughs> of it and uh, have something done in two weeks and um, fully working for um, the work of uh, that, that app right now Clarence performs, but we hope that we can um, scale it so that other professionals can also use it. And Alex. And Alex, yes, and um, Alex from Code from, from Boston that um, really gave us the first insight on what was um, going to be our focus on um, maintaining this and making it like as code free as possible. Yep, I'm really proud of you guys. It's so good. And Clarence didn't know anything about any of this ever before. He just jumped in out of nowhere. Um, and now these kids are going to be better off, and they're very vulnerable, and a lot of other people are helping this way too. And, and I guess I want to recognize you, Gabby, specifically for jumping in and saying fusion tables, and here's how we can do it, and then hacking it together, which none of us could have done, and then having an anchor point where the other hackers could come and join. So it was like a dream team, I'd consider. And I think this is great. I wouldn't change anything. 
Um, I don't know, can, but now I'm a softy and I love these people. So please uh, beat them up and make them better. Um, anything that you could tell them so that it's you know, fabulous. Whatever you say, it's fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> it was too. Yeah. That's not I, I agree with Mike. You're a rapper, photographer, you're coding is overrated. We're good. The uh, statement I have is um, it's very exciting. Have you thought of uh, the dynamics of being able to drive the, uh, the shift to social uh, patterns? I can see that there right. might be an issue where you have uh, people who are autistic and you know they might uh, I was asking, become a little uh, you know nervous if they're um, I would say if they're, if they're you know, driven towards certain uh, behaviors. You want to have a system where if somebody has skills that, that they're really poor at, that, um, that those get risen up to the top. Mm -hmm. That uh, you, know, you don't just give people rewards for uh, the things they're doing well, but also encouragement for the things that they're not doing well. And, uh, yeah, um, so we're definitely open to um, different ways of um, making this happen. So Clarence has developed this um, life credit system and he's um, using it with um, some of his clients um, working on um, not making you um, see your pitfalls, for example, so the clients they never receive um, negative points for what they can't do, they just receive um, positive points for what they could achieve. And it's certainly a uh, work that really depends on the therapist and how they're going to um, evaluate the kids. This is, um, it also opens uh, paths so like a, a way for self-evaluation and for evaluation by other um, agents, so the parents or other um, professionals, um, school teachers, and um, other people. But um, this has been something that has to be thought of for to be beneficial for each um, kid, each client. So. Um, Right, because everybody's different. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also their goals are different. So it's not a fixed system where you have like fixed goals um, for everybody, only like, for each person. You can personalize it and see um, graphs that are meaningful to the, the objectives that you want to achieve with that uh, specific kid. Mm -hmm. I love the idea. Let me put a picture. Yeah, That's what I see, which is just really, really nice. Good. If you, um, if you had a system, where the person has had any ability to say, you know, hey, I know myself all the time. This is what I'm good at. Why don't you give me some points for what I'm good at? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, often it's the case where people are just pounded into the ground for the things they're not good at. Mm -hmm. When they have some, uh, some great skills, they have some great um, uh, attributes that, you know, if, if they got some support for it, they can really, really excel at. And there's a, there's a way to to um, almost engineer this in a exactly. very very interesting way. That's very exciting. <laughs> oh yeah, um, th this project is like uh, mostly designed for uh, the specific case of um, therapy with autistic kids. So that's the the whole ecosystem. It's not just the application, but it certainly could be um, the basis for a broader um, goal of. Um, I think you does know the name of like self. You told me this like self evaluation. Oh um yeah, uh, they're talking about about this uh, budding community of people that are uh, use information systems to better understand themselves so cells for self-awareness improvement and it's quantified self is the movement. Oh, right, right, right. it's very connected to what we do in Sandy Pentland's lab um, with passive data sensing especially as and not five hours of data entry every day um, but quantified self and they've got a lot of great hacks and those can be applied with the help of professionals like a therapist uh, as well to help collect the data, understand the data, work with you with your behaviors fundamentally. You know, one other thing I'd say to your uh, point, um, Brendan, about um, the customizability of this and, uh, and to how Gabby was talking about it. When we were getting ready for January, and uh, uh, we spent like three weeks um, with like um, meetings um, and um, 
uh, getting good with GitHub between um, uh, Clarence and I, kind of just understanding what we'd be hacking. He, his major insight was he kept asking me exactly what tools kind of did which things in which way, and what I, what I, came, I gave him a table and markdown saying, on the left side, describe your life credit system methods that are tool agnostic, and on the right side, describe the types of mechanisms that would be handy, or like ideally show me what you're doing now. Well, I take notes on this app or in paper, and then I put it into Google Spreadsheets, but basically mostly talk about the sorts of mechanisms that you would like to see um, from a user perspective or otherwise, but the main thing is separating the methodology from the mechanisms, and we had a clean method um, on the left of how he, does, how he applies this motivational and awareness system and when the interventions are, and basically his method, um, which could be achieved by any number of tools. So um, I wanted to highlight that in part because part of the concept is that you can do it with free Google Apps, you could do it with uh, Ruby Gem, you could do it with you know PHP, you could do it by putting together paper in the best way and like on, on the wall uh, in various in index cards. Uh, and what I think Clarence hoping to grow now, and he's done an amazing job tracking this like top like a dedicated team that would like lie down in traffic, like, I, I know, like I'm, I'm dedicated to what he's doing and to the children that he's doing it for. Uh, he wants to grow it now in Boston and get more people using his method and then showing their methods and then doing tool talk about ways to um, config or to you know like hack the Google apps and other apps that do the job. And maybe ultimately um, people can get good or even certified at doing methods with a bunch of uh, tools that are accredited. That's yeah. Are we ready? We're and we're ready. <laughs> um, okay, um, I'm gonna go, if Jonathan, if you're listening in internet land, um, I'm going to find a room for James to meet with you. Um, but first, this demo. Hi there, as we get the next demo finally um, loaded up, I'll, I'll just tell you a little bit about it. So up next, we're going to have Simon and Bill presenting on bidding wars, which is their solution to um, really kind of the, the skeezy practice of, of a bidding wars that happens in, in real estate. Yeah. Um, so I think this should be a good one. We've got a demo um, from Simon. I think Roman from EtherCamp helped him build um, some contracts. And Bill is going to be talking about more of the business and legal uh, piece of it afterwards. So I think Simon first, and then Bill talking about business and legal. There. Do you want to show this and like pull it over? Is that what it is? That's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's do that. And we're and we're learning. What we're hacking again is like a uh, bunch of demos on hangouts in a more developing way, uh, among other things. Oh, I see. You've got this on a full screen. Right? Okay. Here we go. Just pull that bad boy right over, and there you go. Yep. That's a real. That's a real good. Can we go first? Yeah. Yeah. You see okay. Some good, uh, my mistake, Bill's going first with the legal and business, then Simon with the technical. Pull it into display. So you have to pull it. Uh, what bit, what can you just show right you? Right. Pulled it to the right. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Keep going. Okay, so I have got uh, three minutes. What do I? Do? <laughs> okay. Well, it's whatever you can do. This is first trial run of many. Can you pull it a little bit more? Because it's not even uh, the screen all the way. Well, I can't get to the screen. Right? I'm off. Right. 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 Right
Hold on, we're having some technical difficulties. <laughs> Is this what you want to show? No. The slides? Yeah. Sure. It's like, no, I don't know how that pops up. That's You mentioned the last time. Oh, okay. I don't understand. It's a second screen. No, uh, it's just not showing. What's not showing? So how do I see it there? I can mirror yeah. them. Almost. I, you know what? I can just talk to the images if you want to advance them. Okay. I mean, you, you, know, you, you, you I mean, the next swivels. Yeah. So you, you can go like that. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, 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 I understand. You see them here. I just, I've never it's certain this place is much. I'm looking at them though. I don't think it's just like two desktops on the back. I've never used that function. It sounds like you haven't used two desktops. It's two screens. Yeah, no problem. So you just kind of mirror them. And that's going to make this complexity disappear. Here we go. Mirroring is my friend, and I didn't know mirroring was a thing. Now, now we are going to start this. I think we should say, for technical reasons of my misjudgment about screen management practices in our civilization, I take full responsibility. Uh, I think we should run the clock back to zero. What do you think, Carolyn? Huh? Let's not penalize these people oh, for yeah, my lack no. of fun. No, no, no. Technology practice. Right, practice. Um, right. Instead, let's go back to zero, and you guys have five minutes. Are you ready? On uh, Carolyn's one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'm actually thrilled to be part of this hackathon because bidding wars have been a problem uh, globally, and um, within the regulatory community, they call it a multiple bid situation, and that will become obvious of why as we go through. So if you've been reading the news, you know that uh, falling prices are front page news and real estate is impacted by those falling prices. Uh, yesterday's um, Wall Street Journal talked about Canada being vulnerable in particular, and that's in part because bidding wars have been out of control there. This is an article from a couple of years ago. Uh, it's not often you see a word like sleazy in the headline, but when you have six, 72 bidders and the price goes 600000 over asking price, maybe that kind of language is appropriate. So one of the problems behind the bidding wars is, are you even bidding against someone real? That's known as a phantom bidder. So here at MIT, we specialize in truth-telling. People may recognize this image from the infinite corridor. What if what if blockchain could deliver a transparency solution? Might the implications of that be multi-billion dollars? Not just here in Cambridge, and we'll get to that in a minute. Excuse me, that's an exaggeration from Cam for Cambridge. Not just here in the U.S., but globally. So, flashback to 2009, we had a new president, and we were in the middle of the Great Recession. At one point, one in four homes in the country was upside down on their mortgages. Uh, we'll fill in some slides as they come. Um, thank God this is a dress rehearsal. Yep. But Robert Schiller from Exuberance, at one point, the uh, housing market out of control was 6 to 10% of properties selling over asking price. We've seen 60% of houses selling over asking price. And worse, people are doing this through a blind process. They don't know if the other bidder is real. So in some cases, these, these issues raise to the level of international scandal, and that's why the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is now taking a look at what's happening with dark money and luxury real estate transactions. But right now, that's just in two markets, New York and Miami. What about people who can't afford to buy in Cambridge? We've created a generation of real estate refugees. So there's the problem statement. Now we go into Daza land with BLT, business legal and technical. Here's our one-page description. Uh, there's the pain point in Toronto in 2012. A bidding war inquiry or complaint every 30 minutes. Uh, we know the feds are not paying attention. In fact, they've set up a new data flow to protect consumers before they get to the closing table. What Simon and I want to do is try to move up that protection. 
This is where the sausage is made. Can we introduce some transparency and verification here so that people don't get left upside down? And guess who picks up the tab? Taxpayers now insure 90% of transactions. Used to be one in three, now it's nine out of 10. So there's some other uh, more sort of in-house points here. Let's leave that for another uh, presentation. But one of the things that uh, blockchain can deliver is agency level services. That's why we're here at MIT Law. The name real estate agent has agency services in its title. What happens when that becomes conflicted? Well, when it goes bad, you sue your agent because they were not acting as your fiduciary. So we've got a three part process here that involves verification. Can you bid? Can you afford what you bid? And was my offer even so? On that note, I think I'm gonna hand it over to Simon. There are more things here, but uh, including hopefully an investigative report at some point. So I hope the VIP cast that gets to see us uh, a week from today understands that the big short is still an evolving part of it. Part two with Simon. Now okay, the I'll technical. Try to do what people told me now to do, which is give you a live demo. I don't have any right now. Uh, so, but anyway, so, <laughs> uh, so, uh, so basically, what I'm going to demo is um, uh, a project in Solidity, which uh, will. Uh, Jesus, where, where is my screen? Um, uh, just right behind the Slack. Right. Which one? Which one? I, so uh, you did, you put it in. Um, blockchain projects. Blockchain projects. Yeah, no, right in, there. Uh, is that it? Oh, that's the slides. And you put it in your um, the uh, bidding wars. See up. Oops, one, one, no, no, mm -hmm. right below that one. Up. Okay. Oh, Sorry. one up. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay, here. Sorry about that. So. Um, I will uh, show them uh, in uh, either .camp ID of uh, a very strong uh, software implementation of real estate bidding. So what I'm going to do is to uh, uh, start a new contract. Just that's that's. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't. Uh, yes. No, it says, it says, can I use my computer? Yes. Yep, we can take a break between the two okay. presentations. Can we, can we take we a break? Can. So it's, uh, we'll just take not, it's not, it's okay, so I'll just go grab your computer, set it up, and continue when you're ready. Okay. Um, and that, that's why they, we start with the question, can you do this on my computer, or do you need your own? And then, I um, think we thought. Okay, so I'll make, maybe I just, I'll look for the code. So, oh, uh, okay. do you need your computer? Uh, no, that's okay. So I'll just work through the code. So uh, it uh, it's a new your contract that's called uh, bidding wars. So basically, we have two methods here. It's, one is called place bid, and another one is uh, auction end. So uh, whenever we instantiate a contract, we set up uh, uh, we set up the source address, and then we set up the time interval uh, where the bidding is allowed. And then uh, every time it is uh, coming, we will uh, call a method called place bid. Uh, so we will add um, it will add to the list of active bids, and this is totally public, so everyone can go and look at the bids at any time. And then uh, when the action uh, auction is over, I'm sorry, when auction is over, uh, the other method called um, which is auction end, and it will. Uh, Pop up the highest bid and send funds to the seller. So this is um, in uh, which line system. number eighty two three. Yeah, line eighty three. So uh, auction end is line seventy five. Will uh, fire an event called auction edit, and then it will refund everybody uh, who is not the winner. The method called refund all, and then uh, when. That method is cool. You can see that uh, all the bidders get their money back except the winner. And then the last method is 88, which sends funds to the seller. And for authentication, we use 
uh, a hash of garment issued ID. So whenever Peter supplies a bit, he or she is required to supply a hash of its public ID, which is used for verification purposes. So basically, we um, this way we avoid civil attack possibility because uh, all the bidders will be known. That's about it. So I'm sorry I wasn't able to run the contract, but I, I don't exactly know what the problem is, but I can demo it my computer. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, um, do you come back up so we can do your own feedback? Um, and um, I meant to get some feedback. Just come. Um, cool. Okay. So uh, I, I, I'll get us started. Um, so first of all, I think that was super terrific. Not merely terrific. Um, and that's a that's a good start. But you can you can get better. Um, so I want to. I have two types of comments for you. Oh hi. Um, one comment is just on presentation craft, and so um, guess what you would have done next week if we hadn't been practicing what you just did. Yeah. Um, and so, <laughs> well, that's lucky. Um, and so, like on practice, um, I think one thing I'd say is scripting is probably going to be your best friends because between two guys, that's that's tough to start with. And so, um, I'm going to recommend a script. You don't have to literally do the script, but just have it. Right. Um, it's, it's so few words and so so little time. It's not that onerous, and I think they'll be helpful. And then you could absolutely deviate from it. But if you get scared or something goes sideways with the technology, like protect your safety, um, and maybe have it on your phone or print it out or something, don't print it though, please. And then um, we. And then the other thing I was going to say is, uh, um, I think in your case, having a, you're going to need a 90 second video anyway, uh, just to um, be able to take your place and in the glory and the splendor of our gallery at the end of it. So like we need that 90 second video, I can help you with it. Think about a think about what you want to show in the 90 second video. And my take on what the best thing to show would be, Simon, what, you, what you're showing, because like now that's in a sense the actual prototype and the hack. Um, but you might want to, I'm not sure. The other way you do is tell the story in the video and then do the hack live. It's just the thing, like I don't know if you noticed, but, what everybody said when you're like, now I'm going to do a live demo. Everyone was like, <gasps> you know, like anybody that's like technologist here is just terrified. Yeah, sure. And what I felt for you and that it worked is a miracle, but you can't depend on that. So it might just be this for um, risk management, but also in terms of the flow of the story, that doing that part on video and standing up there and either speaking it and turning the volume off or just letting it speak for itself. Yeah, because we have time for the video. No problem. But so that's one, I just wanted to sort of block out the things. The, the other thing is the, um, I think some further stitching would be helpful um, between the code and the story about the code and the underlying business process that you guys came up with with bidding. Um, and so, um, for example, Bill has highlighted, I think, like two key business functions that are needed to uh, be solved in this case through code. Uh, one of them is verification of the identity of the bidders, um, and the other one is some, um, I guess, uh, some validation that they have the capability of paying. Um, and so I think I saw those in the code, and you I, you highlighted the function um, right at like line seventy three, five ish uh, worth of refund in the escrow if the conditions you know fail to be met or something. But I would actually play it all the way through, even if it's just in comments. I would like get together and tracking what the underlying business requirements and constraints are, and I think those are the two really big ones. Uh, but maybe there's one or two others. And then just like super highlight it um, in the code as you're tracking through it. Um, it's right there, but people may not put it together. And um, that's your right to do that. Like you did achieve it. Um, the other thing is, uh, um, I think, I don't know, did you get a timing on that? I wasn't timing it, but it felt like it was more than five minutes. Was it more than five minutes? It may have been more than five minutes. Not, not, it was pretty close. Yeah, pretty close. Was it? Yeah, I think if you take out some of the hoopla in the middle, we were Dynamite. pretty close. Okay, then kudos on, on the timing then, in yeah. that case. But just always be aware of the timing, please. Because um, gonna, we're going to try to end people at five minutes and then let others talk. And so you know, don't, don't let that happen to you. Uh, the other thing I was going to say is I think some kind of looking forward call to action. So technically, I'll bet you for sure, I can almost hear in your voice, there's a lot more that you would like to be hacking and there's more that you could do and would do and want to do and others could do 
maybe starting to foreshadow um, next possible steps on a roadmap or like good, good things that this has raised um, in my mind that I would like, like I don't know, bank integration or other um, maybe um, um, pub sub or notices to like when people put a, a purchase a bid in, they are like waiting by the phone, they cancel their vacations, like they just want to know, like they're riveted by that. Like if there's any revenue potential here, I think there's a lot of revenue potential between the Mortgage Bankers Association and everyone else. But people from the moment they have a bid in to the moment that they either cut the house or they lost it, they're like they're all consumed by this. It's what they think about when they wake up and when they go to sleep. And you know, So I think um, maybe think about integrations for notices, um, alerts, um, and then um, and then same with you, Bill. I think looking ahead to next steps, like so, you know, who's coming to town in 2018? I do. <laughs> Does everybody know? Yeah, it's the real estate. Oh yeah, the big hell company. yeah. Um, so it's like that's probably how you got me in, like how you hooked me into this whole thing. You're like they're they're all coming to Boston in 2018. It's exciting. Um, it's great, and it's like gives us a purpose, and it can help you continue the great community. Did you talk to Jonathan? Oh, a little bit. Is there another room? Oh, did someone, someone come in? in? Yeah, someone came. Damn it. Yeah. Um, Sorry. A moment. Okay. Sure. Um, a, a, so last thing is I'd say like talk about what's next and uh, do a call for action. So you have a GitHub repo, I think. Make sure all your code's in the repo, please. Um, if you don't have the code there now in the slides and so forth, like at some point, I'm gonna we'll be more specific on Tuesday with workflows, but you should have a copy of the Google Slides in your GitHub repo which will work back. So have a copy of whatever the code is that you're using in the, in the GitHub repo. Um, and I guess I would say once you have the GitHub repo, and I think you, you may have a domain name, or maybe it's under Real Estate Cafe, but wherever it is that, if there's a meetup where people can hack on this in the future, make the call to action, because it's real, you're here. Those can be a, an anchor point in terms of uh, at least the business people and the realtors and, and that part. If you want to keep hacking on the assignment, um, then everything <coughs> goes. Like if you know that you'll be hacking on a Ethereum work, a meetup or wherever, or, or if you know that you won't, then maybe then just say like, Bill's got the code, go to the GitHub repo. But like a call to action is appropriate in this case, because I think it's hot and it has legs and like it can grow. So those are, that's my feedback um, at a high level. Any other feedback on this one? Yeah, so, so the lead in I thought was, 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 was good. Um, but I guess what was it so clear to me was um, how does your thing solve the, um, the, the bidding and the, yeah. Like it would be, I think it would be useful when you present, like to say, this this problem happens with these kind of situations, and this is what our thing does to prevent that from happening, right? Um, you know, it's sort of some of the stuff that was just like sort of like authentication and stuff because somebody can put in like like how do you know it's a valid right government issued ID number? If I put in my social security number, you get a hash that, right? But I can put any six seven digit number and I'll get a hash, right? That will you know, so how do you validate that's a valid um so it's a, it's a valid issue so basically we fall back on the existing system of identification which is yeah, not which I think is just something that cached and it's supplied with a div. So when time counts to actually execute the transaction we will check that uh, okay. and compare it to hash. And that's how authentication is done. So optionally you can have it even certified by a certificate authority. Right, so you can have uh, like extra pair of eyes to make sure that there's a smaller paper. Right, right. And uh, to your first question, so I guess the idea is that uh, all the bits are public but anonymized, so you can look at the current picture of the auction, which I hope I'll be able to demo on my computer. Uh, yes, right. That was, right. That was my other part. Right. right. About it. What can people see? What can't they see as far as the bidding process goes? Right. So. Uh, <laughs> They can see the current bids and they can see the caches of people's identification, but they cannot see the names. Right, right, right. And every time when a bid is replaced by the same bidder or the, there's a new high, high bid, you get a notification. So basically what Dazzle was mentioning is that every time there's another bid which is higher than the previous one, everyone gets notified. But at any point in time, you can watch all the bids in existence, so it's completely transparent. And uh, how you know that you're not bidding against yourself because 
can see that, that you know the, those participants sign in the different. And I guess the last thing I want to add, real quick, is that <coughs> um, Whisper, which is part of the Ethereum suite of, of fitting, try to use this real time messaging protocol, um, might be useful to look into to see if that could be the way like inform people. Oh, you just got outbid by so and so, or your bid was accepted, or whatever the, the different things are. Um, I watched the um, DevCon talk about that, and it looks sound pretty interesting. Um, I didn't get a lot of press the way a lot of other parts of Ethereum do, but it's actually a pretty interesting uh, protocol that might be useful for, for your, your application. This red map a, a more primitive solution, which is uh, last time the real estate market about how to sell your home in five days and the key was that you priced it about 40 percent what you thought you would, would right. get and you'd create this circus like uh, lottery uh, something for nothing and he proposed and also every time there was a new high bidder he just called up everybody but with technology sure. like that sure. that gets instant alerts uh, that that's a really to keep that transparency moving up or or any other comments? Oh, we got one. Are you saying that uh, it's actually not good enough, or just the ones that are unknown? Uh, I mean, I, I don't want to make a global statement. If, uh, people is going to have their own out point based on my experience in the industry. Um, what what's your hypothesis? Well, clearly. Such a system would prevent people make a full false hit. Right? That, that's phantom bids, right? Yeah, that was the threshold. Yeah. But um, aside from that, um, are you proposing or, or saying that your system will not allow one way bids or a one way market? Uh, you, let me say that that's, that's, just that's sort of outside bids. the scope of what we attempted, but it's an entirely appropriate question. And it, and I, since all we have is five minutes, I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'd love to talk to you about that. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Great. Um, any other comments? I think that was uh, a really an excellent start, and I think that all these comments and these questions are gonna help shape the final presentation. So thank you everyone for your participation. I will say before we move on to the next person, it's some um, um, interesting information about major real estate organization, uh, like a re really big conference that's going to be happening next week in New York City, and that they're having a session entitled How Blockchain is Changing How You Do Business. Joseph Lubin, who I mentioned earlier, who is the founder of Consensus, and pretty much the reason why we've got all of these tools here that we're sharing and hacking on, uh, is going to be talking a little bit about how blockchain can change the real estate industry. So just an interesting tidbit. Um, from Bill, and so thank you, Bill and Simon. Um, up next, we have. Oh no, we, I think we've got Daza before. before you. Daza and James and Gabby um, presenting their idea that's called ideation. They are both not here. Oh, okay. <laughs> It has changed so, so, so comments about the even if there's no slides, maybe just no, no, coming no, up and talking a little yeah, bit. No, yeah. I'll do it on Tuesday, but again, but it's it. okay. Um, well, we don't have anyone from Hotel Blockchain or XM Chain. Hashim is not here. David and Jing, come or Jing, do you want to do um, talk about XM Chain a little XM Chain is part of this class, I know. Chris. And, can't, and John have been the main ones part of this discussion. I didn't know if they had brought you in. Uh, yes. <laughs> See, just, we're just doing a, a schedule rearranging. Um, so, yeah, I guess you guys have two options. There's. Uh, Saya, Saya, not Sia, because I keep wanting to say Sia like a pop star. Saya, <laughs> Saya, um, or Axim Chain. 
Um, Let's go last. Um, we can do either, but so I could do I could do a, a demo that's just offline, and so I could walk. I don't know Albert, Ellie might be as well, but basically some of us, yeah, so basically we don't have anything by way of like what we're going to demo a week from today, also known as normal. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so let's take advantage of the fact that we live in kind of Red Channel and like we're somewhat organized now and, uh, and we have an opportunity to, to make it good. And maybe what I want to suggest is a good way to do it is to just like rough it out as though it is next week right now. Um, and so I think that isn't like, don't say what I'm going to say, just say it as best you can. And I think like roughing out two or three slides, if all you have is one slide, like Stephen may just have a slide that says, and you may just speak to it. Okay, that's one slide. Like we can build on one slide. It's file, slot, new slide. And now you have two. Um, and so that's why I think that's the format I think we all should follow. I think we should all follow the five minute rough figure out two or three minute demo instead of a five. That's okay. That's great. You know? So why don't we, the folks that are kind of on the bottom of the list that have not gone yet, why don't we take a like 15 minute break? to gather that one, that two, whatever you can manage, one slide, even if it just has one word on it or one logo, let's have that up there and just sort of gather your thoughts for 10 minutes. And even if it's two minutes, we'll just kind of run through the list. So a 15, so 15 minute break and then we reconvene yeah. at a time certain? Yes. I just have it in my head. I just got a couple hours of uninterrupted time I don't seem to have. It. You do, you have one week for that. No, no, I know, I'm saying that. But Okay, I feel like I think this is a great place. Something after the break, and that will be helpful in a couple hours. I need to say something better next week. Yes. Um, especially the feedback that we can get in the room here. It's yeah. going to be good. Because we're kind of in together. For me, the part of the hard part for me is okay. we just getting All right. So, so okay, let's. So shall we stop talking and start hacking? Okay. Okay. Let's minute do it. break. Okay, so tell us what time so that we're going back. We will be back at 4 p.m. Do, do, do five minutes each. Eastern. Eastern. Yes. <laughs> so 15 minutes. <laughs> okay. And should we go on mute, video mute sound? Okay. Or do you guys want to hear like the ambient sounds of like the hacking? The two people <laughs> watching. Right do that? I, I think we can have some ambient sounds. Okay. Ambient sounds. sounds of the hack it is. There it goes. <laughs> All right. Sausage factory commence. Let's do this thing. Okay. Um, so James um, gave me the option to work with you. Um, you guys are working on, are you going to present together? Um, look on site or no? Are you on site? Uh, I haven't turned it in, but I'm also working on ICT. I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I, just, I just want to make sure you're on yeah. two teams, maybe? Yeah, sure. Okay. okay. If you could say, if you could help the target in some way, like you probably know their pitch for the 100K, like that would be very helpful. And or maybe you have a slide or two. Yeah, session probably. Better pitch. Yeah, I mean, it'd be good to start since Chris, but no one else shows up and you're the only one there. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, You'll do you fantastic. Know, um, and I can help you on it. I know that none of the are wrong. Okay. Yeah. Um, you guys are done. Brent. We had a working you, session are on you, Monday. I want to pass on this. I'd like to talk to you for two minutes. Okay. Um, Al's hacking. I'm going to be hacking. You're not going to say anything about your idea. Oh, okay. So, Abby, do you mind getting started? Uh, <laughs> can you get started? I've just heard you pitch your idea like, I know it's there and I know it's good. Well, well, I'm excited to hear about how much better it is. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Right? Because I'm just saying it. it's actually a real issue. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm not sure. It's just so nice. You know, I've already got two clothes. I just pulled my hand. I'm sorry. 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 I'm
course. But the pitch is here's how what we're doing, here's how it works in Google, and saving it for here's the tools to do it. Uh -huh. That's how I that's right. Okay. I'll be right back. Thank you. Okay, so just two minutes. So to join. Oh, so this to me, you need to watch what's going on live. Yes. Yeah, it's um, just in the general channel. I posted it a few when we started, like an hour and a half ago. How you doing? Uh, good. I was just looking for power. Is this good? Yeah. Yeah. It was. Um, it was here from like a twelve to two class okay. that was in here. So <laughs> twelve to two. So that's your judgment. I would eat it. <laughs> oh, you're already eating. Um, I think. Uh, I know. I know. I Yeah. 
Right. So the first one again. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. I'm trying to do a screenshot. Yes, I have a slide to do with some more information. So okay. So this is the this is okay. So how many of you have uh, one. <laughs> so, so he went from a closet uh, to a okay. so, 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 um, yeah. like in like a year. Amazing. Well, yeah. Like yeah. Like yeah. Like yeah. Like okay. Okay. So, explosive potential. If we're going to be able to get bosses, we have to be putting uh, employing people. Related to their degree, so in the position that requires a degree, does not require a degree chance. And we can't prove that we do. Uh, okay. Do say that that position requires Yeah. Do that. Yeah. So, but yeah. yeah. If you want to talk to a related immigration lawyer, my mother, attorney Miles Howe, is an immigration lawyer. Oh, wow. <laughs> Um, yeah, okay. and then the other thing is that if you don't already have these one, um, they're 85,000 a year. Can you transfer uh, that? And last year, the first week, for, for yeah. there were 240,000. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. so it's like six grand. What did you make that? So we didn't tell the government. We tried to tell the government. We tried to test it out there. We wanted to do it. We tried to test it out there. We want to well, the that's the <laughs> she, she is in two of the projects, but that's not what we need. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think that's because she's like buds with the officials. So, you know when you get in your car now? That's it. It was this time. Low key bribery. A lot of people don't know these kinds of things. Like, the, the things that were invented at the lab. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's there a lot, but I moved to New York. Yeah. I think we should still never come in and visit here. Really? Yeah, I want to go to the park. 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 No. Yes. 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 Well, 
That makes me feel better. <laughs> I, I first proposed uh, creating Getting More Lab like two years ago this week. And here we are. Bootstrap. So I mean, we're so we so 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 yeah. on Let me just say that first of all, it's what you need to do. You may have heard of me the other Yeah, that's what I said right now. So Simply by creating records and record systems that function on the road. Would you age? Just, you know, I'm all for capital. That's not the sure. I'm, yeah. I'm all for capital. There's yeah. trillions of dollars to be made in every world. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. you have to work on is making the truth. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we do this. Right. There's no shortage of money. Right. Right. But um, yeah. it is true, though, that there's a lot of people that are just doing their hair and just showing you because they want to be happy that day. It's not done. Right. Yeah. Or Just correct me quickly. Uh, 
But you know how you guys are dope too. What else? Are you Me neither. I'll tell you why. I think that's the main point. It's good for you. Okay, I said, okay, so I'm cost right now. Dope. Dope. Yeah. When you want to be good. Yeah, perfect. Um, so do you know what the slides are or something else? So I, I'm a big fan. The reason I uh, met Tyson two years ago, he was doing the legal hat. If there is like a work from flow. I would just look at that. The personal data and it was just beginning to find out And now they're very excited. It's up to you guys. You want to do the work. So this is how I see the emerging real estate ecosystem. Chris, John, Carolyn, and I have done some in the trust center where I came up with like an idea of how we could put up this smart. In any case, the industry as exists today with GitHub is that it's NLS centric. The emerging players are that. Sensible city, Internet of Things, quantified cell, smart homes. Um, we'll have intelligent agents that can do our bidding for us. This is the great thing that you're just what I Hi, a few more moments. We're just getting the next folks lined up. I think we're going to have presentations from Exim Chain very briefly. Um, and also from Saya, and then um, that might be it for now. But we're just getting close. Okay. Okay. I call it bliss on explore it. And who you are, your best self. <laughs> Not who you are living in the bottom of you know some thing because that's all you can afford. But if you, if you have a wearable device that knows what you can show to go metrics better than your judgment, it's a way to be able to do this. And here's a great thing. If you want to offer something else, you can actually be on your bench or you take out what's possible. You got to ask them really good questions. Yeah, what was the really big part? The really big thing for me is how simple it is. Yeah. So, generally, those like that things are just okay. Yeah. Quite sleazy. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, so you can yeah, get like yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm really glad that Daza has every time given me the opportunity to say who's coming to town in three years. Because the fact that the realtors are coming here, and I think that's a small on the ground for us to say, let's read that they're in the time I get. Any role you want to play in that, I'm all ears. Because I really need to have people in each of these clusters. You know, contributing to the lifestyle. What I would like to do is we have 12 business quarters to like that event. And I would, each quarter, I would like to do something, some bring together of best practices, recurrent challenges. Leading it is disruption point. Well, yeah. well, 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 I mean, I'm not sure. You know, I'm not sure. sure. Um, let me send sure. you something because I find if I don't do it with you on the spot, support, it sometimes it doesn't happen. So okay. I will photograph this. So you're, you're, you're from Boston. Did you do that? I'm actually from St. Louis. Okay. Um, are you a Midwesterner? Um, New York City. York City. Oh, it's almost Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say to you, you know, we have this chest. You know, if you're right, if you actually look at the message, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So anything, anything right. west of Cape Cod makes me a Western. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, I live in the United States. I think she was close. Wow. That's awesome. Yes. I'm glad you were in the United States. I worked in the United States. I used to walk. Yes, you get it. Yeah, it's very much one of the things I'm going to do. I'm going to do it. 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 I'm going to so I'll just say, you know, to you. Just real quick. 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 Just real quick.
I mean, that's, I can't imagine you pitching with that one. So, yeah, I'm trying to just drop it in. We just dropped it. Yeah, I'm trying to move it down. Yeah, I'm trying to move it down. Yeah, I'm trying to move it down. Chris, uh, Robert, you seen that? Yes, yes, yes. David, you're down. Okay, we are getting started again with David, who is getting his technicals in order, um, and then he's going to talk about Saya. Oh wow, I never pasted the line. That was, that was really He didn't paste the line. Yep. <laughs> and we're learning. <laughs> and we're growing. <laughs> and we're feeling good. We've had our first, um, nice we've had our first graduate. Okay, could our newest come on up? Where's the cupcake? Uh, it's coming. Yeah, we're, so we had a graduation party in fall. Uh, so Steve, we're happy to say after uh, some conversations with uh, Jonathan and others, um, I think we may be hearing more about um, your idea uh, as a proper launch. What? And uh, my, my sense is just looking the way it was going and the IP and stuff, like best to be on a different track. You know, maybe there'd be patents, maybe who knows what. Um, but it's like you graduated basically early. Um, and uh, <laughs> congratulations. We, have, we will have Carolyn and Jonathan, I will have a cupcake for you. And then we've asked as part of your ascension to a new transcendent level of participation if you would join us um, uh, as, uh, as critiquer and reviewer on the panel of projects. Next I'd love to do so. Excuse me a second. So, so I want to thank you, Daza and Carolyn, you know, and all the people at Ethereum. You guys really, you know, I've learned a tremendous amount in the last few weeks, and it's been great interacting with everyone in the class. Uh, you know, great, uh, energetic, motivated, you know, confident people. So thank you very much, and um, I'll be uh, I'm gentle as we do. Yep. Um, All right. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Now I give the floor to Dave. Cool. Um, so my name is David, and my project is Sia, and we're doing decentralized kind of storage. Um, so. The basic idea is that people who have extra disk space on their hard drives can offer it up to the network. Um, and then other people can utilize this disk space. Um, and so using that, you get a global set of nodes, uh, a bunch of global nodes, and you can put data on all of them. And that makes your data very fault tolerant, um, very, very reliable. And because it's a free marketplace, it also drives prices. So the prices on SIA are set by the and this creates competition and um, drives prices down. So I have, oh yeah, um, everything I just said. It's also very secure, uh, very private, because everything's encrypted on your local machine. And when the host gets the, gets the data, and when the data is going over the network, it's already encrypted. There's nothing they can do to break into the file. Um, so I have a, some screenshots of a demo that we whipped together. Um, so. Here's a wallet. Um, because it's a payment platform, you do have a wallet with money, and there's transactions. Um, and so we, we have money in our wallet. This is the uh, file viewer. Um, so these are all the files that we've uploaded. You can see the, the highlighted file file um, we uploaded the code. And it's it's at 75% is continuing to upload. Um, and then we have a bunch of other files. Um, we also have folders, and so this the file browser in progress. And the, the files that you see here are actually on the network. They're on, I think, 12 machines. Well, as is very normal. So, and those machines are getting paid. So here we have a machine that's getting paid. Um, it's got 10 file contracts. And between those 10 contracts, there's about six gigabytes. So it's sold six gigabytes. And it's looking to make a thousand coins off those six gigabytes, um, which translated into dollars is like one one hundredth of a penny. Um, so that's cool. cool. 
<laughs> That's what the free market will do to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that doesn't sound like a lot of money. <laughs> well, <laughs> That's that's what the going price is. Um, so some there are enough people out there who think it's enough money that they're doing it for that price. Um, okay. And so yeah, generally we don't uh, advocate posting for consumers. You have like one terabyte or, or less, just like a couple hundred gigabytes. So you're talking about pennies a month. Um, but like for enterprises who have thousands or tens of thousands of terabytes, um, that actually adds up, and you you have like income that you can appreciate. Um, that, that is worthwhile. Yes. Have you thought about what you think you've always done them? Oh, sure. Yeah. So, so I got to. Um, the next slide this is uh, the host. He's trying to open the file and see what the contents are. Um, so these are encrypted contents. And if if you can figure out how to make any sense of this, you should uh, submit a paper to uh, NST um, because that would be amazing. Figure out what this what this means. Sense um, of disturbance in the matrix. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So yeah, we're uh, we're mainly enterprise, but it's good for people too. That's uh, that's what's hard. Awesome. Thank you. That's the way you do it, man. That's great. It's good hack. Uh, it's all open on GitHub, and I love you hack together your demo in no time at all um, as well. So really good start. Let's get right from that forward. So I think Brandon, uh, Brandon Marr has uh, some comments questions for this. Yes, I, I do like it. The question would be what my cable bill will be when they charge me for uh, download and upload speeds of two uh, petabytes. Yeah, so currently the client does not support bandwidth rate limiting, um, and bandwidth is free. So if you're concerned about that, that's probably a good thing to be concerned about. Um, However, in the next like two to three months, we do plan to have both. Um, so you can cap the speed and you can cap the amount. And you charge people for doing the downloads. Um, so so whatever whatever cable bill overcharges you're looking at, you can make sure that the people using your server or home connection or whatever are actually paying for the overdues and, and you're still profiting. Yes. Yes. Do you have other files distributed across all the different hosts? Yes. Do you want to elaborate on that? Um, yeah, so <laughs> on, the, <laughs> on the files in the demo, um, I'm, most, I'm, I'm making these statistics up based on graphs I've seen of our network. But So they're on 10 hosts, 12 hosts. They're on 12 hosts around the world. Out of those 12, uh, I need two of them. So you need two of them to be online to download the files. And I think for those files, you're going to see them in Boston, Australia, a lot in Europe, uh, like two or three in Europe, Russia. And then we had a guy in Africa for a while, but I think he was charging a lot of money. So probably not that good. Um, yeah, so all over the world. So if there's like, you know, earthquakes or hurricanes or bombs or something, um, Data is pretty safe because it's uh, you have to hit a lot of locations to snap the data off. Uh, so that's cool. James. So what, how does it work if you are storing someone else's data and then you decide you don't want to do that anymore? Or you, like, is it is there a process? So yeah, the system. Um, so we actually just did that like. When you agree to store files, you're on the hook for a specific period of time. Um, so when you become a host, you, you offer up your storage, and you accept contracts for, you know, um, and then you're on the hook. And when you want to start recovering that data, if, if for whatever reason you need it for other purposes, um, what you do is you can just flip the switch that, that'll make it stop accepting your contracts. So you're still on the hook for however many however much time, but oh, uh, your your existing contracts will will start to expire, and you collect the collect the money on them, and then uh, you just start to reclaim this, and then after the six months or whatever the, the max time has expired, um, you'll have reclaimed all all the data um, while still being online and available for people to download stuff. So. Right. Um, oh god. Yes. Um, 
You, you can choose as a host, like, do you have many options? Yeah, so the algorithms that we use for reliability are pretty amazing in terms of uh, industry standards, but pretty awful in terms of like what a home, home user might experience. Um, so we need our hosts to have an uptime of about 95%, um, which as a data center is, you know, data centers usually need like five or six nines, and we don't even need one. We need like one and a half. Um, but as a home user, 95% uh, uptime means you can't just turn it on at night. You have to, it has to be plugged in all the time. Uh, but, but if it is plugged in all the time, you can like power outages are okay and disk failures are okay. Uh, yes. How often do users get paid and how often are they getting paid given yeah, so you get um, you get paid immediately. No, that's that's false. So all the payments go into a contract, and then the host receives the money at the end of the contract, provided that they're still online and still have the data. Um, and so, however far out you set the contract, the whatever your max duration is as a host, um, that's that's the longest time you'll go without receiving a payment. And I think that once, if, if you're up for a long time, um, say like you know many many times the max length, you're probably going to just have a like a smooth function. So you're probably going to have contracts expiring every day, and you're probably going to get small payments every day, and you're just going to be six months behind on your like total income. Yes. Are you repeat the questions? Yeah. Please continue. Are you encrypting the network stack? Uh, so the question is, are we encrypting the network stack? And the answer is no. Um, we encrypt the data before it goes out over the network, but currently uh, none of the network communications are encrypted, or there's no there's no like anonymization or anything of uh, of the communications. So it's, in that sense, it's not secure at all. Um, well, it depends on what you're trying to protect. You would extrapolate on that. Yes. Well, I mean, if you know, if you, you know the fact that you know that information is being sent to a specific um, client, you know, divulges information in itself, right? Yeah, so uh, with our current setup, if you upload a file, it's going to go to 12 locations uh, or, you know, however many locations. And the complaint is that someone will be able to, because, because the data is, or the actual communications themselves are not encrypted and they're not anonymized, someone will know who you're sending data to, how much you're sending to, and from that they can learn things about you, um, which is definitely true. Um, so if someone's looking to target you and they know that your data is in 12 specific locations, now they have 12 targets instead of uh, 500 targets and they're not sure which, which 12 to hit, now they know which 12 to hit. Um, if you have additional concerns. Uh, also, the usage is described as the web today. <laughs> that's how the web works today, anyways. Right. right. So, you know, there, that makes the point. Obviously, we're going to scrap all the network. The question that I have, from, uh, I don't know if it's obvious, but okay. Yeah. I would love it to be just from the switching and switching and stuff, right? Like, talking about IPv6, right? <laughs> Which was the middle, like, 15 years ago. We still were having full and full of things. Who else was on this? Somebody, 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 you. Hi, folks. Jonathan here. Jonathan and Lucy. But I'm going to go into the other room. I don't know. Can folks hear me? Can you hear me? I'm not sure. Somebody else would be on. Can folks hear me? 